Good morning, all. Good to see you all here this morning, this first Sunday of Advent. Jesus says, Be watchful, be alert, for you do not know the day nor the hour when the Son of Man will come. Be watchful, be alert, for you do not know the day nor the hour when he will come. But let's just suppose that we did. Let's suppose that all of us here were, for however it came about, this is a, a question just to ponder, like, what if we actually knew the day and the hour and the exact time? And here's the time. It's going to be Monday, December 4th, at 5.07 p.m., about a day and a half from now. And all of us in this room are attuned to this great secret that nobody else knows, but for however it works, we know the day and the hour. What is going to be the next day and a half looking like for you? Now, to put this in context, what is it that we're attuned? What's the secret? What is the second coming? Well, to kind of put it in perspective, we believe with divine and Catholic faith that Jesus Christ, just as he came into the womb of Mary, and was born of Joseph and Mary in a little stable, will come again. We pray in the creed with a dogmatic faith. It's not just a, an opinion preference, a thought process. It's the dogmatic teaching of the church that Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, he will come again, we pray in the creed, to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. And when he comes again, he will come with great glory, before he came in, in a hidden way. The second coming of Jesus, he will come in great glory, and all will see him. He will come on the clouds with myriads of angels, and he will come to judge the living and the dead, the sheep and the goats, It'll be the definitive end. And it'll be the resurrection of the body. Like all the millions and millions of people that have ever lived and died, they will arise from the graves and their souls will be brought back with their bodies. That is the second coming. And that will happen. And Jesus says, we know not neither the day nor the hour. But the, the question is like, well, what if we did? And it's Monday, December 5th, 4th, at 5.07 p.m. Just making sure you're all awake. What's the next day and a half look like for you? What are you going to do? What are you thinking? Jack, what are you thinking? <laughs> What's the next day and a half going to look like for you? Now that you, you know that this is coming, the, the, the end of the world, the judge of the living and the dead. What, what, are you, what are you thinking about? What are you going to do? Good. I'm going to pray more. <laughs> yes. Jess, thoughts? Probably go to Mass. Yeah, I probably will too, I think. Yeah, no, seriously. Folks, any thoughts here? What, what is the day? What's that? Confession. I thought you said fishing. <laughs> <laughs> Confession. Interesting. Somebody else. Okay. That's, <laughs> first things first. That's right. Uh, somebody else said something back here. Rejoice. Why? Because he's, he's coming. Do you think that that's a majority opinion? Probably not. Probably, <laughs> probably not. But praise God, it's yours. Anything else? Like, practically speaking, like what's your, are you going to cancel anything? What are you, you going to drive somewhere? Yes, sir. Just continue on to live, hopefully. Amen. If you're doing the right thing, <laughs> yes. Actually, did you read that saint book? It was, it was a disciple of Saint Ignatius of Loyola who was asked that same question. Ignatius, saint Ignatius asked him, he's like, what are you going to do if the Lord was coming tomorrow? And he said, I would continue planting the garden. That was a man who was living profoundly in the will of God. He was not in fear, like, well, I'm doing already the Lord's work. I wouldn't do anything different. But perhaps it might not be a majority opinion. I asked this question uh, to the, some of the mass servers a couple days ago at daily mass. I'm like, we're just in the sacristy. I wasn't thinking about the homily at all, but it was a really just fruitful discussion. I'm like, well, what are you going to do? And one of the servers said, yeah, I'm, I'm going to make the best freaking confession I've ever made. <laughs> and then I'm going to spend like 12 hours in adoration. Someone at the 8 a.m. mass this morning, just a couple of hours ago, said, I'm going to tell some people. 
We, don't know, we do not know the day nor the hour. But what if we did? And those are the things I think heighten the sense of what Advent is about. Because if we were to put into two basic camps of the kinds of things that we're thinking about, about if he's really coming in a day and a half from now, there's probably, at the end of the day, there's like two basic patterns of what we're thinking. There's things, a great many things, that were quite relevant to our life up until now that are totally irrelevant. Taylor Swift is going to come to the next Kansas City Chiefs game. Totally irrelevant now that Jesus is coming. <laughs> the Minnesota Vikings on December 10th are going to play the Raiders at 3.05 p.m. Quite relevant up until now. Now, it's not happening. <laughs> There's going to be a whole number of things, like all the things that would kind of consume a lot of our attention, not even per se sinful things, but just things like, I have a hair appointment. What does my hair look like? What kind of style do I want? What am I clothing? I'm going to go shopping for Christmas. What kind of clothing am I going to like? I have to get the, you know, what's in the new style? Totally irrelevant things if the Lord is truly coming. A lot of list there. Then there's going to be a whole list of things that maybe were not quite as relevant, but are now deeply relevant. Confession, mass, prayer. Personally, oh, I have a whole host of things. And it actually has been a reflection for me about like, what would I do? I would truly seek, and I've done this before, but I would do it in perfect order. I would be calling up everyone I know that I've ever had a beef with, and I would deeply apologize. I'd make amends. For people that have ever stolen anything and they're still living in thievery, just like Zacchaeus, when the Lord called him from the bottom of the tree, I want to stay at your house tonight. Zacchaeus is like, Whoa! he's like, behold, Lord, if I have stolen anything from anyone, I shall pay it four times over. Oh, the things that might not have been so relevant before immediately become relevant in the face of eternity, in the face of the second coming. Is this how we're living life? The things that are deeply relevant are, practically speaking, the most relevant things in my life right now. Repentance, faith, prayer, charity, forgiveness, reconciliation. Or are we kind of in this whole list of things that are kind of irrelevant, that seem quite relevant? That are all, well, in the words of C.S. Lewis, who said it very well, he said, Everything that is not eternal is eternally out of date. And as soon as you start thinking about eternity and about the definitive end, all the things that are not eternal, eternally out of date. And suddenly, all the things that perhaps are not always on our immediate horizon, schedule, thought processes, are automatically like, oh, they're deeply relevant now. Several weeks ago, the gospel was, remember the gospel several weeks ago? It was about the ten virgins. Five were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones were foolish. Why? Because when the bridegroom came and the door was open, and then it wasn't, and it was closed, they were foolish. Why? Because they had the lamps, all right? They didn't have any oil in them. And so they just were like, we'll go run off into town to go get some oil. The oil symbolized good works, the works of charity, the Christian life lived out. And they naively thought, we could go buy some oil. It was too late. And for many people, many people, in various ways, if the Lord was only coming in a day and a half and they suddenly heard about it and they knew for sure it was going to happen, wow, we try to put a lot of things in order. But if we're not living radically in the relevant things of the gospel, time is too short. There's not a lot of time. If the day was actually coming, oh yeah, priests would be hearing confessions right, left, and center all day, every day. The lines would be thousands of people. But maybe you wouldn't get in. Because everybody's doing the same thing. It's kind of like supply and demand. <laughs> Are the most relevant things of the gospel and the Christian life, practically speaking, the most relevant way I'm living? Or is my life more dominated by things that are in the face of eternity, totally irrelevant, totally out of date. This is Advent. You do not know the day nor the hour when the Son of Man 
will come. Not might come, not I'm thinking about coming, not I'll write you beforehand, like, he will come. Now, we don't know, but if we did, it's a good reflection about where my, where's my heart today. We've heard a number of different reflections. Finally and lastly, I'll just say, Advent is not merely about preparing for the second coming. It is certainly that, and that's a great reflection. It is for me this week. But it's not merely that. It's also recognizing that the Lord has come and is here already. So this is the second question. I want you to consider, just for a moment, if we definitively knew, before I asked you the hyperbolic question of like, if, the, if we definitively knew that the Lord is coming in a day and a half, different question. If you definitively knew that in the last 24 hours of your life, unbeknownst to you, you had actually met the Lord. Where do you start thinking? Where do you start? Because this is actually the Christian life. Jesus says, behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Lord is actively at work. He's not just coming definitively again. He will, but not merely that. He's also here now. The Lord is present. He's Emmanuel, God with us. And God is speaking. God is actively at work. And oftentimes it goes right past us. And so this Advent, I'm inviting you to do something really practical. To claim the last hour of your day for the Lord. Claim it for the most relevant things. It can, it can be whatever you want, but the things that are going to matter for eternity. And if I could highlight one practical thing, I've made just a little printout. And there, it's on a baptismal font, and there's also copies on the little table right outside the main doors. And I invite everyone here, before they go out of, as they're going out of Mass, to grab a little slip of paper. And it's called the Examine Prayer. I mentioned St. Ignatius earlier. St. Ignatius of Loyola cultivated this deep awareness that the Lord is truly here. And oftentimes he goes right past us. The examined prayer is examining my heart, my mind, my conscience, and my lived experience in prayer to be attentive to the promptings of the Holy Spirit, to be attentive to where my own heart has strayed and drifted into sins and things of total irrelevancy. And there's a seven-step process. It's really simple. It's actually very simple. It's on a tiny little printout. And I'm inviting everyone this Advent season to claim the last hour of their day. That doesn't have to be all prayer, but claim it. And perhaps as part of that last hour, you take 10 or 15 minutes to pray with this examined prayer. I think this might just change your life. <laughs> I, don't mean, I really think it will. Because life always changes definitively when we start living for things of eternity. And they'll start to become more dominant. As we go into this Advent season, let's make it different from last Advent. Because the Lord is new today, unlike yesterday. He's new today. He's doing new things. And we don't just want to live in a frenzied fear of now of what's to come. We want to live, as some of you already said, in peace. Because I'm, I'm really seeking to do what the Lord is asking me to do today. I'm looking forward to it, as someone said back there. That's what we want to live in this Advent. Not heightened fear, frenzy, anxiety. I'm planted in the Lord. My heart is awake and vigilant and attentive to the most important things, the things that are relevant to eternity. Amen?